Have you ever been approached to write film music or television music? Mm. Because, in a, in a way, it almost your your your, lang your musical language seems tailor made for that sort mm. of medium. Has that been? It, it has cropped up uh, in conversations, uh, but it's never come about. Mm. It, at that time, that moment may have gone. I think it's a, a young man's business right. uh, uh, to write music for film and television. And um, I don't think I could do it. Uh, it's something to do, uh, something to do with the fact that um, uh, you're your own boss when you write uh, music for, um, for concerts. Um, and uh, you have to relinquish that control to someone else, a director of a programme or a film. Yes. I recently had a meeting with a, a Russian film director and we talked about the possibility of me writing music for his film, but that meeting lasted 20 minutes and it wasn't going to work. <laughs> so to go well. I've, I've got a feeling that this, that moment has passed. Mm, holy minimalism, <coughs> that's the genre of the school. Um, it was like Jatam and Goretzky are my pairs. Mm -hmm. See yourself ever as part of that that movement or that sort of school or on the periphery because your especially your core on music does share certain qualities mm -hmm. with some of those composers. Yes and no. Um, I had some very interesting conversations with John Tavener about this very thing before he died, and the differences that came up in the conversations were were interesting and quite stark, mm -hmm. and it pointed to the differences in, not just in our compositional approach. Uh, which I'll come back to in a minute, but perhaps even in our theological differences. There's something about that, um, uh, an Eastern orthodoxy perhaps that, that characterises John's work, but also Arvo Pert and others, yeah. that is not really mine. Um, they, they attempt to, to create this sense of um, a transformative heavenly beauty, a, a picture of heaven yeah. in a musical icon. Uh, and I love that, uh, and I, 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 I recognise that, but I know that that's not really what I do, or what, what not only, the only thing I do. Yeah. And there's a lot more tension and, and uh, violence even, and uh, um, um, anxiety in my music that doesn't suit itself to the so-called holy minimalist. Yeah. Humanity almost, would that be a valid word to use? Or one well, one sorry. of the things that came out in our conversation was that uh, I was interested in some things that John wasn't interested in. I was interested in the, the dirt and mire of human existence, mm. and that perhaps even the crucifixion itself is part of that, and that, that is not a beautiful thing, no. and that the, 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 the crucifixion and, and the torture of Christ uh, resonated and reflected in other people's lives is not beautiful, but it does, has drawn artists, and I can't just give a monodimensional picture of heaven. Uh, I need to portray everything. Uh, and also I have a commitment to m modernity, I suppose, uh, modernism. Um, the sonata form works for me, uh, it doesn't for John, and he was very uh, clear, he set his mind against that whole dialectic thing in the Western tradition. For me, I, I couldn't live without that. That's sort of structure to work within. Yeah. But going back to the, the violence of the crucifixion, for example, I mean, that's, and violence in general, I think that comes across in your music quite, quite a lot, actually, in some sort of, like the symphony vigil. Or is it the cello concerto? Sorry. Mm -hmm. They're both connected. There's a sequence towards the end where he's got this block of wood on the hand yes. meant to represent the hammer going yes. across. Yes. Yeah. I mean that's quite a quite a horrifying thing to listen to in a way, but it's mm -hmm. very it sort of gets you right there in the same way that parts of Isabel Gaudi do. With yes. That yes. Th I mean there are moments of quite sort of uh, stark violence mm. in, in a lot a lot of what I write, and yes. I don't think it could be any other way considering some of the subject matter, the extra musical dimensions of the music that has that, that inspired the music in the first place. Absolutely. So, um, just lastly, before we let you prepare for the mm -hmm. rehearsal, you can see some choir members assembling. Mm -hmm. um, two, two of the works that on the One Equal Music CD have a beautiful part of solo violin. Various other religious works, Gloria Requiem, your own seven last words, <coughs> Matthew Passion, um, also feature uh, 
substantial violin solos. Mm -hmm. um, usually very simple playing, not very florid sort of virtuosity. Mm -hmm. Why do you think religious composers are drawn to the pairing of texts and chorus or soloists in the St. Matthew Passion and, and solo violin? What do you think that <coughs> represents that the voice couldn't? Well, there's a number of things here. I mean, there is something about a, a violin rising out of a choral texture, uh, which is heavenly. Yeah. Uh, it, um, it's, it's, it's not the lark, a, 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 the, the lark ascending, it's perhaps the soul ascending. Mm. Um, and there, there is that in some of these works that, and even with Bach, with his halo of violins uh, above um, uh, when Christ sang. I mean, there's something in the, the tradition that makes us want to use that sound with with, yeah. with chorus. And uh, it's quite hard to do, though, because it's a very different sound world, so you have to be quite careful about what the violin does. It can't simply accompany uh, the voices. It has to have its own space, its own world. And it almost, in some ways, seems to reflect or give a different dimension to the text that's being sung. Yeah. Which is... Well, it's, sort of, it's one of those things that music takes off where words fail, perhaps. It's quite extraordinary sort of moments when, those, yes. when that happens. Yes, I, I enjoyed writing those two pieces. Uh, one of them is, um, is, is, is a, a Lenten motet in Latin, um, quite episodic and repetitive. The other one is, although it's got a Latin title, it's a, it's a secular piece, Domus in Felix Est, which is the Latin translation of There's Nae Luck About the Hoose, uh, which is an old Scottish yeah. folk song. I did it as a bit of a joke, really. It sounds very serene, uh, but there's a kind of strange, enig enigmatic, almost a kind of hidden Jacobite meaning in, in uh, There's Nae Luck About the Hoose. It's something that the Jacobites sung when they were defeated by the forces of the crown yeah. and uh, it, it still remembered that way and I thought well it's quite an interesting little game to play so I'll translate it into Latin yes. and it sounds quite uh, holy uh, but it's actually a, a very secular Scots thing secular and of course there's a Scottish folk song in the middle. Fantastic. Right okay well um, thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. Pleasure speaking to you and um, I'll let you prepare for the first. Great.